So in this video, I'm going to show you how to take this Japanese black pine and turn it into this. In about a year. In this video, I'm going to show you the topic of Japanese black pines. It, it can be a very complicated and overwhelming species to learn about, but I hope to break it down and simplify it for you here. It's not going to be a short video because there's a lot to cover and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so the subject of Japanese black pine can be overwhelming when you first start into bonsai. It certainly was for me, so I did a ton of research on uh, the when, the how, and the why you do certain things with Japanese uh, black pines. So Japanese black pines are actually two flush pines. Uh, and I created this little animation, very high production value, uh, to kind of explain why it's a two flush pine. And uh, you know, some of the other pines that you can find uh, typically in the, in the bonsai hobby. So check this out. There are three pines widely used in bonsai. Japanese black pine, red pine, and Japanese white pine. Because red pines live in the cushy comfort of the valley, they are much more susceptible to weather and disease. Red pines in Japan are under threat though, and a large percentage of the native trees have died. They are, however, more tolerant of water because they were grown by rivers and valleys. Japanese white pines are single flush pines found in the mountains. They can deal with the elements of weather and dry conditions, more so than both the Japanese black pine or the red pine. Japanese black pines are found generally on the coastline of Japan, so they prefer the maritime conditions. The Japanese coastline is hit yearly by cyclones between July and November, which can wreak havoc on tree branches. Consequently, black pines and red pines have developed this ability to grow a secondary flush when its branches are pruned or broken during the growing season. This is why Japanese black pines and red pines are considered double flush pines. Beautiful blue atlas cedar. Look at that thing. This was really fun for me to go to the Puget Sound Bonsai Society's spring show. When I'm at these shows, I get such inspiration after looking at some of the trees uh, to work on my own. Um, at this show, we had Dan Robinson doing some demos. We had some of the gnarly trees on display and some of the club members trees, which looked fantastic. When you first get a Japanese black pine, there are five goals you want to achieve besides bonsai design. Before you go into design, you want a healthy tree, and that's number one. Number two, you want energy balance. Number three, understand when you can work on the tree in your climate. Number four, generate smaller needles. And number five, ramification. This is more branches. Here, I'm needle plucking to balance the energy on the tree. When you needle pluck, you want to pluck the needles down to the same amount of needles that are found on the weakest branch. Okay, this thing has been needle plucked. I took off that much right there. Time for the next tree. Look at that. We've had record-breaking rain here in Seattle for the last literally three, four months. And it's been so wet, the roads have been flooded, closures have happened, and uh, a lot of insurance claims on flooded cars have probably been submitted. And today, we have blue skies. You know what that means? It means it's time to work on the yard.
What's today? Today is March 11th, and uh, I wanted to do a quick update before the bonsai plants uh, all started to wake up and leaf out and whatnot. Um, so let's take a look around. So March is a perfect time frame to start fertilizing your trees. I actually use slow release fertilizer in these little baskets and then when March comes around I will hit it with a little liquid fertilizer as well as some fish emulsion to really give the tree a boost for the upcoming growing season. You can see this really, really strong candle right here. Um, and this is the candle with the oxen that is telling all the other candles right now that I am the boss and I am growing the biggest. I'm actually going to leave that one alone because um, I'm going to use it at, use it as a sacrificial um, trunk to develop my trunk. Okay, so you'll see the top of the tree. There's a lot of dominance and growth up there. In the middle of the tree, you'll see that the candles are a little bit shorter, but they're definitely bigger than the candles down here. See those candles? They're tiny. Look at them compare. I'm gonna do this. Look at that candle compared to that candle. So when it comes to black pine, it's all about energy distribution. And right now the distribution of energy is completely unbalanced in this tree. So what I want to do is candle pinch. And candle pinching does a couple things. It will reduce the vigor of that branch as well as control the length later. Uh, of that branch. So with this tree, I'm not going to touch any of these lower candles. I am going to pinch off the midsection candles, leave the top candle alone, and then wait until um, about early June to then do complete candle cutting or decandling. Because uh, Japanese black pines are two flush pines. And so right now, in April, all you want to do is control the vigor of the tree by candle pinching. And I'm going to pinch it down to kind of about that length right there. Okay? And basically, I'm just evening out the energy distribution so that this candle will get as much energy going to it as the other candles and when I break that tip off I'm basically telling the plant hey look uh, there's nowhere to go here so go ahead and send that energy back into the tree and send it to the other guys same thing right here pinch that off I've already done this one there's a couple up here I'm going to pinch that off and I know this is going to be tall so I'm going to go ahead and pinch that off Okay, that's it right there. So now all these candles are gonna get a little bit more balanced. Um, they're gonna get a little bit more balanced and then um, we're done with the street. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it for now. Okay, let's take a look at my two other black pines right here. Um, this one I just got, I just did needle plucking, you know, kind of try to balance the, uh, the energy on the street. Not gonna touch it. The candles here are not that established. This one I've had for a couple years. Um, and the candles on this is actually very, very, very even. So they're all very even. And on um, honestly, I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna break any of these candles at all. I mean there's a little node here that has three, right? Um, I may just take the middle one out and leave that, leave the other two. Besides that, I won't touch this tree <laughs> anymore, any further. 
So, you know, it, it's doing pretty good. Um, the energy distribution on this tree is actually very good. I'm not going to touch any of these candles. I'm not going to do any candle pinching on that any further. So here's one of my Japanese black pines and um, I haven't wired it and I've just kind of let it grow. Um, last year I really didn't decandle, I actually only pinched because I wanted to create some length. Uh, so this year I'm actually going to decandle uh, and um, I'm going to cut back all of the new candles. So you can see here there's it's very lush, very healthy and there's a lot of new candles on this tree that needs to now be pruned back. So in April, I pinched this tree along with all of my other trees, and um, I haven't removed any branches yet. I'm not going to do that until fall. So in this video, I'm actually uh, I'm just going to go ahead and cut the candles now. Okay, so I've got some rubbing alcohol here. I'm just going to make sure that all my tools are sterilized uh, prior to, to using them on this tree. I'm going to start right down here towards the bottom and kind of work my way up, um, but I'm going to cut off all of the candles leaving, you know, a couple millimeters of growth here at the bottom where they can bud back. Um, and the idea here is to cut everything. So there's three candles on here. Cut everything. This is June 1st. So typically, um, you want to cut um, in the Pacific Northwest, you know, depending on the size of the tree and the, the growth and vigor of the tree. Um, first week of June is, is ideal for some of the larger trees. You can do mid-June for some of the medium trees. And if you have a show him black pine, you want to do later in the, uh, in the month in June. That's because in the Pacific Northwest, we kind of have a shorter season than, uh, let's say, folks down in California. And so, you know, they may do a little bit later, like, you know, mid-June till, um, till through, throughout July, because they do have a longer season than us. So, um, Pacific Northwest, you don't want to do too late. Or else, um, you won't have that season to kind of grow back that new shoot. Cut everything. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go through this entire tree and cut back all of the uh, all of the candles, um, and then uh, I'll do a hyperlapse with that. Uh, afterwards, I may do some candle plucking, um, or maybe even cut back some of the longer needles, uh, and I won't fertilize after this because I do want the uh, new candles to grow back smaller. Um, and that's the whole purpose of doing this with uh, black pines. So on this particular tree, I actually won't cut back any of the branches. I do want <clears throat> every single candle that I cut to grow new candles and then be distributed amongst all the, the branches that I'll keep and some of the branches that I won't keep because that energy then will keep those needles a lot smaller and, uh, and that will achieve more of the goal that we're trying to go for here is you know, ramification for one and then smaller needles Okay, so here's something I want to point out. No, no matter if the candle is big, small, medium, this is kind of on the small side, you know, you have to treat it equally as, um, 
some of the other larger candles and it's important treat all your candles equally big small brown yellow black white treat them all equally so cut that little guy too see these right here they have three cut them all the same and treat them equally remember to treat every single one equally because once you do that they will all flush out with the same amount of energy and same amount of uh, growth and length and that's the idea okay so now that I have all the candles cut um, I'm gonna do a little bit of plucking and even uh, cut some of the other longer needles shorter it's gonna cause them browning tips but I really don't care at this point it's it's about now telling the plant hey look I'm gonna balance your energy even more by keeping everybody at the same level okay so yeah, I have been doing a lot of studying and reading on, on Japanese black pines and how to take care of them you know throughout this, the year and um, there's only really about three times of the year four times a year they actually work on pines repotting season pinching decandling and then fall would be uh, when you um, can do some cutback so right now it is decandling season for these guys and it is time to do some needle pullback on these so I've heard kind of varying degrees of how many needles you leave per branch um, but uh, you don't pull back all of the old needles you kind of want to leave some of those because they, they do have um, they do do um, you do have a purpose within the tree to one photosynthesize but two back bud potentially in that area you know like here for instance I left some of these older needles right I'm just gonna do this and these guys keep everybody the same length okay so I'm gonna do that all around the tree I'm gonna do this one as well I'm gonna leave about um, it, it varies from from person to person you know but this one I'll probably leave about I don't know, maybe 10 pairs, 8 to 10 pairs, something like that. And um, basically you're just kind of weakening that branch. But then you're also distributing the, uh, the energy to other parts of the tree. See how long these needles are? I kind of don't like that. I'm just going to cut it back like that. I'm going to do one more right here so you can see it, and then I'll move over to hyperlapse. And there's so many different ways of handling black pines, and people say, hey, you want to do the bottom third first, and the middle two weeks later, then the top two weeks later, so that way everything will grow out exactly the same. I'm going to go with kind of Ryan Neal's approach on this, which is cut everything at the same time, He's in my neck of the woods in the Pacific Northwest and uh, very good with horticultural aspects of doing bonsai. And so, um, you know, I don't mind following his method because he is very, very knowledgeable and a great teacher. Um, and I will follow that. There you go. So that's kind of what I'm doing and I'm going to work my way around the tree and uh, I'll show you a follow-up. Not a follow-up, but you know, the result of all that. Okay, so now the tree has been decandled, needle plucked, and I've shortened all the needles so that they're all the same length. I will get some browning on the tips, but this is definitely nowhere a show tree. I haven't even wired it, um, and I am just trying to treat this tree as if it's still in the development stages, um, you know, which means keeping it healthy, uh, trying to ramify it and then uh, balance the growth and once that's done that's when you know I'll treat it with a little bit more care in terms of not cutting the needles and getting the brown tips and whatnot uh, it's also still in a training pot a plastic training pot so you can tell you know it's not ready to, ready yet okay so that is one tree down and then uh, I've got several more trees that I need to do here's another black pine that uh, I really love so I like this tree quite a bit because of its um, it's very unique. It's actually uh, a dual trunk tree and um, 
I'm growing. You see that really big strong candle right there? That's going to be a sacrificial trunk thickening type of uh, branch that I'm growing. So I'm actually leaving that to grow while I'm developing the rest of the tree. So that, that uh, the longer it gets, the thicker it gets, the thicker the trunk will get. So I'm leaving that alone and then just kind of refining the rest of the tree underneath it. So right there is where it'll be cut eventually. But um, for now, I'm just gonna kind of let that grow. And uh, I learned this method through, uh, I believe it was either Bonsai Tonight um, or Bonsai For You, but I think it's Bonsai Tonight. And uh, so then I'm using this method to kind of think in the trunk on this tree. Let's give it a spin. Okay, so I don't have a real true trunk that I've picked out for this tree yet, but um, the dual trunk tree will probably look something like this uh, in the future. And um, I really like this tree. I, I really want to work on this tree and get it down to a very refined stage. And um, so the this one the, and the previous two trees will go into nice bonsai pots this coming spring. Let's get to work on this one. Okay, all done with tree number three. Let's give this guy a spin. Yeah, so uh, I like the way this looks. A lot, of, a lot more airflow is going to be go going through the tree, more light. Um, everything is relatively balanced on this tree to the point where uh, I feel really confident that um, as the new flush comes out, the, uh, the needles will be all very comparable. And that's, that's the, uh, the goal, that's the, uh, the end game here that we're trying to achieve. Good morning. Looking at the conifer bench. It's got my black pines, hinoki, Japanese white pine. Today is July 4th. It's been a very cool 2020 as far as climate here in Seattle, but um, causing a lot of vegetative growth. But check this out. About a month after decandling, I'm getting uh, new buds that are coming out on uh, the black pines. I slowly work my way around. You can see buds here that are coming out at the tips where I've made the cuts. See a bud there. Another bud coming out over there. Oh, and these ones have like a bunch of them. So this is about a month later. And uh, Japanese black pines have grown their second flush. These new candles are, should be a little bit shorter. And uh, I've stopped fertilizing, so that way, you know, kind of ensure that uh, they come out a little bit smaller. Okay, so let's look at this black pine right here. Um, and look at this branch right here. What's special about this is, you know, we've been taught to only cut back to the base of new candles to get uh, ramification and new second flush. Um, however, this branch was out to here originally, and um, I cut it back to last year's wood. And look at all the new growth that came out of this. So I would only do this if the tree is healthy, showed a lot of vigor, and is growing really well. Um, where you only have needles right if you didn't have needles there it would not bud new growth that branch would literally die but I took it back a lot farther than uh, um, this year's new candle and look what happened look at all those buds there's a ton of new buds After the second flush, I can see where all the back buds are. This is the time to cut back those leggy branches. Okay, due to branch selection on my uh, Japanese black pine, gave it a nice whirl, um, slight bend, and uh, cut off all the elongated uh, 
growth from the previous years just to kind of keep this thing in check. Okay, I'm gonna do some cut back here on my dual trunk Japanese black pine. I'm gonna get rid of all the leggy growth and cut back to new buds. Okay, here's my dual trunk. Um, I cut back to, into last year's wood in, in uh, some parts, but you know, I made sure that there was some bud uh, in that area. So there's a branch here that I didn't do it at. I would like this to ramify here at that point. There's a little bit of needle here that I don't know. You know, I don't want to risk it and cut off that branch and have it die. There is a bud here, which would actually save that branch if I actually did decide to do that cut. Um, but it's a little risky and, um, you know, it's a pretty vigorous branch, but if I cut it, I might kill it. So we'll see. I'll wait till next year to do something on that. So it's late August, almost moving into uh, September. And uh, well, you can see here, this is my Japanese black pine. The second flush has definitely come out in full force. And I'm gonna show you what you need to do next to keep this thing uh, in check. So check out the, uh, where the candles are, um, where the end of the candles are. So you can see here, you know, once we did the cut on this tree, there's four new candles. There's a few here that will have two or three. The, the top one here has four per branch up here, so it's pretty vigorous. Again, that goes back to the apical dominance of um, pine trees. So now, what do you do? Well, it's time to, um, and it's more of a timing thing, kind of wait for the sheaths around the base of the needle to fall off and this one is starting to get there and you, know, you didn't want to do the, the selection when they first flushed out because um, you don't know which one is the stronger candle weaker candle and you also don't want to cut any candles when they first flush out because you know that distribution of energy then uh, gets moved in just a few candles and so the, you'll have longer candle growth which is not what we're trying to do here we're trying to create energy balance and ramification bifurcation so um, we wait until now which is moving into kind of that end of summer beginning of fall time frame 
The other reason to start doing uh, candle selection now is also to get rid of any potential large whorls, which can start to form as these candles get larger and uh, kind of more established. So, um, yeah, so let's just go around, make our selection, and then work our way around the tree. This one shouldn't take too long. I love this scissor from Bare Bones. It is super smooth, very sharp, feels good in the hand. Um, it's cheap too, I think it was only under $20. So yeah, if you folks from Bare Bones, you know, I'm not getting sponsored for this, so yeah. Um, I just like the, uh, the equipment. Anyways, if you guys want to sponsor me, let me know. <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm just going to go around and I'm going to make my cuts here. I'm going to select these two because they're kind of forked out like that. Cut it down to the base. I'm gonna do this branch as well. So this one's kind of weird. It has very weak candle, very strong candle. Kind of want to pick a balance of candles. Um, I'm just gonna leave this one as is. Let's do this one. So this one has three, two on top, and then this third little one at the bottom. This one doesn't need to be here. These are perfectly balanced, these two right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this on um, time elapse and then go through the tree, take care of the rest. Okay, so I've gone around, I've made my uh, branch selections or candle selections um, and left some more that uh, more than two, just because I, you know, I wanted that option later on to, um, uh, to pick and choose, you know, as the tree develops. So this tree is very much in development. It's not in refinement. Um, and I want to talk about the apex. So the apex kind of breaks the rule of having to do bifurcation. Apex, you, you want as many branches as possible. Okay, so with the apex, you know, the top third of the bonsai tree would not follow the bifurcation rule. You actually want as many branches as much as possible up towards the apex. And the reason behind that is you, know, you want this full dome, right? So um, here you see that there's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I'm actually just gonna leave those alone. I'm gonna let that develop. I may wire it down some, so that way uh, I get more of a spread. But again, this is tree development. This dome right here looks like crap <laughs> right now, but you know, give it a couple years, maybe three, and then it'll start to fill out and give you that nice kind of helmet shape. September update on one of my Japanese black pines that I've been working on for the last oh, almost a year and a half um, roughly and when I first bought this thing um, it was moderately leggy here after about a, a year and a half it's been um, ramifying and uh, I've, I've worked to kind of shorten all of the branches and candles I've even done a graft on it I'll do that on a separate video if that thing actually takes it's looking pretty good most of the needle lengths are relatively short you can see here it's pretty dense compared to uh, the past so shift over the screen here and I'll show you what it looked like over a year ago Uh, September update on my twin trunk Japanese black pine. You can see here the ramification is getting a lot better and the shape of the tree is, uh, is starting to form. I mean it's uh, this thing is probably about eight to nine years and mm, maybe a little less than that to be honest. Um, I'm growing a sacrificial leader and I have kind of 
marked the tree for about this height. Take a closer look. I love this right here. Love that little lower branch. Might be even be a second tree that has kind of fused itself with the larger one. Let's take a look at this. The energy of the tree is relatively even. Um, it's taken a year to get to this point, which isn't too long. Uh, prior to this, the tree, you know, maybe had its candles pinched, but never had its candles cut. that fall is right around the corner um, there's one last thing that we need to do to get the plant ready for the next growing season and it's time to fertilize you're right you're thinking probably are you crazy you don't fertilize in the fall well you do because what you're trying to do here is build up the root system and the energy for it to flush out next spring so fall fertilization is really important it's probably something that people usually don't do uh, because they're thinking well why would I need to fertilize and let the tree grow um, during the fall with this upcoming dormancy season in the winter uh, well you're actually not using nitrogen so you want really low if no nitrogen fertilizer at all so this is uh, Bloom. This is a liquid fertilizer that I use. This is 284, meaning the nitrogen is low. Potassium and phosphates are higher. Ideally, you want no nitrogen at all, but this is what I have. So um, you also want to use Epsom salt kind of throughout the year, maybe about three times a year. Epsom salt's really good uh, with providing your plants the magnesium and sulfate needed for it to help build up stronger cell walls. Um, so this will help kind of give the plant the protection that it needs for the upcoming dormancy season, as well as help plants uptake nutrients and minerals that it needs throughout the year. So if you use Epsom salt throughout the year, it's probably a good idea. Finally, silica blasts. Uh, that might come off as kind of backwards on the video. But anyway, silica blast, really good for helping build up cell walls, thickening up the, uh, the, the walls and uh, stems on the trunk. Um, and uh, this is what I use uh, for fall feeding. So I, I feed three times a year, March, June, and then um, fall time frame. I also give it bone meal, which I mix into a uh, little fertilizer pot and then plant them on the trees. And I actually use that throughout the year, but bone meal is great for helping up build up the, the root system and um, provide the energy needed during the dormancy season. Yeah, bone meal, Epsom salt, low nitrogen fertilizer that has high phosphates, high potassium, and then silica blasts. Um, and you're good to go. Uh, for the fall as far as fertilization goes. I'm gonna hit this with actually hit it on every single tree that I have so um, It helps build up that energy needed through the winter time frame for the next year <sighs> Okay, so That's it right there. That's a full year of working on actually more than a full year because I started this thing in May of 2019 and um, that gives you kind of an idea of what you can do every single year on your Japanese black pines. And the last part of it was basically fall fertilization that uh, will start the cycle all over again. So if you can go from, you know, this leggy pine tree into something that is more refined, 
with lots of ramification. Um, within one year, think about what you can do in two years, three years, four years while the thunk, the, excuse me, while the trunk is thickening up um, in the process. So you're gonna have an amazing tree that uh, will give you a ton of branching that then you can use to design your final bonsai or your final Japanese black pine bonsai. So I hope you guys found that informative. I know it's a long video uh, and if you made it that far, thank you for watching. Uh, I know it's a long video and I like to kind of keep it short, but Japanese black pine, once again, tons of material to go over. I couldn't just compact it down into just a short video, so I appreciate it. Take care. Subscribe if you haven't. My name is Ben, um, and hit that like button. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.